There can be any number of reasons why you will want to present your user with a list of items that they can toggle on or off um, without committing that list to your database uh, so that when the user clicks a button, in this case next, that is when you save the final list of just the checked items that the user has checked. Uh, to illustrate this, I'm going to, uh, here's my sign up form, and I'm going to use availability. Uh, and we're going to approach this using custom states, so nothing is saved to the database, uh, and option sets, because I'm going to be using a fixed um, collection of options. So uh, let's create an option set for availability. And uh, this is just going to be three items, mornings, afternoons, and evenings. And uh, then uh, I'm going to store this in my user. And in order to keep the power of option sets um, throughout my application, I'm not going to choose text uh, because then I, I lose the option set, the, the power of an option set really. So I'm going to choose availability instead um, because that way I, it, the database is storing uh, an option set value and uh, it's going to be more than one because they might choose mornings and evenings or mornings and afternoons or they might just choose mornings but I'm wanting to prepare uh, a place for a list and then I'm going to need a repeating group in order to show my list and so this is my availabilities and I want to show all availability and a uh, fixed number of cells because uh, I know that it's just out of three and then let's give the cells a label and uh, I'm going to use icons um, to create a checkbox uh, and this is preferable in most instances to using the um, the default checkbox that Bubble provides uh, because this one um, you could style it with CSS but it's not stylable uh, in the Bubble editor itself and it also has a text label attached to it so it doesn't offer a huge amount of flexibility um, but I can use an icon to basically get the same effect but choose um, not box square we go. Um, I can have much more flex flexibility with an icon. So let's make this a, a grey and then hit preview. You can see the repeating group lists my option set. So now let's work out the workflows uh, for when I click on either the box or the text, uh, the box becomes checked instead. So in order to and you create one workflow. I'm going to put both of these in a group. Make the group uh, fill up the whole of the space. And then let's start creating a workflow. Ah, but before then, we have to create a custom state. And you can create a custom state anywhere on your page. Uh, the practice that I take is to create a custom state somewhere that makes sense to me. So I have this container called group C, uh, and I'm going to just label it group availability. And I'm gonna create the custom state here. Um, and so this is to allow me to store the items that are checked without having to commit that to the database. Uh, so um, this is gonna be called checked availability. And it's going to store availability. And again, they could choose more than one, so it's going to be a list. Uh, so let's build a workflow. So when the cell is clicked, um, I'm going to need to set a custom state. And the custom state is in, uh, okay, it's a little bit confusing because it's automatically named the uh, cell as a group availability, but I know that it's this one is where I've stored my custom state. And when working with custom states, you don't have as many list options as you do when working with lists in the database. So you have to use a little workaround, which is to say when I'm adding an item, I have to refer to where I'm storing it to begin with, uh, which is the uh, this one here. 
and then say I want to add an item to it. If I was to just put in this custom state um, the cells availability value, uh, first of all, it wouldn't accept it because it's expecting a list, uh, but if it wasn't for that, it would also overwrite what was in um, this custom state to begin with. So I need to refer to the custom state and then plus item, and now I can refer to the current sales availability. And I like to use colors um, in order to distinguish if I'm adding something, which is green, or if I'm removing something, um, which is red. Uh, so I now need to do the opposite because I have a workflow if someone clicks it, it's going to um, save uh, this, uh, avail this sales availability. Um, but uh, what if a user for some reason clicks it and then clicks it again expecting to remove the availability? So I can do that just by copying and pasting. And then this one is going to become red. And instead of plus, it's going to become minus item. Uh, now, this won't work because both of these workflows will fire when the uh, cell is clicked. So I need to add uh, an only when statement. So referring to the custom state that is holding everything. Uh, so not that one, this one. So only when this doesn't contain the current, uh, no, this is my undo. So this is only when it contains. So when the custom state contains my availability value um, and, it, and the cell, uh, yeah, that bit there, that is clicked, I want it to remove it. And so I can then copy this, save myself some time and paste it into here and swap it for doesn't contain because I only want my custom state list to be updated if it doesn't already contain this availability. We're almost there. There's one thing missing, which is I need to tell the icon to change um, if the availability is indeed in the custom state list. So uh, I go to the uh, custom state, which is that one. Uh, checked availability contains uh, this group's availability because that's the, the row, that's the cell. And then I can go icon and change this to, I believe Font Awesome call it check. Yep. Uh, and let's change the color also uh, to a green so it really stands out. And let's test that. So now I'm expecting if I click on this, it's go green. If I click off it, click on it again rather, it unchecks it. So nothing is being written to my database. I don't even need to have created this user at this point in order to make it work. How do I save it to the database? So I go into my next button, sign up user. Oh, that's from another demonstration. Let's remove those two. Uh, so I've got my uh, email value and my password value and my name value. Uh, so now I need to add my availability value. And this is where I add a list. I'm not adding an individual item. Um, I'm adding a list. So set list um, will overwrite anything that's already stored in there. As I'm signing up a user, nothing is stored in there. Add list will take what is already in that field and add this incoming list into it. So it doesn't matter which one of these I choose right now. I just need to remember that where I have stored my custom state. And that is here. And there we go. Give it a final refresh. So using custom states and using an option set, I've been able to uh, allow my user to toggle on and off a list of options without saving it to the database and then meaning that my next button is where the data gets saved and indeed where this user is created.